Okay, we're going to have a look at creating a vase in, Z Coral in Zara Extreme using um, blends. I've already created this line here um, with, um, so you can see the number of nodes on it. Um, it's pointless creating a vase um, all the way around as vases tend to be asymmetrical. So I'll just create that. Uh, I'll hit Control K to clone it. I'll set the origin point to the top right and I'll flip it horizontally. Uh, it looks a bit fat so using the arrow keys and the shift I'll just ease it down a bit. Having now selecting both objects with the, by holding down shift I'll hit I'll select one of these nodes and join up with that one. It now down here says one line. I don't need that node so I'll delete it. I'll select this node here and join it up with that node there. I don't need that node either, so I'll delete it. Uh, let's just give the bars a little. No, we won't. We'll leave that as it is. Um, no, we won't. Um, just select those two and I'll make those sharp. Now I can move that up there just to give it a bit of a rounded top. Um, so there you have a, a, a general bar shape. Now this thing is we need now to create um, a second shape so we can blend from one to the other. Um, so what I'll do is hit that uh, with select tool, control K, clone it, uh, and I'll fill it with a lighter colour this time. Um, and I'm going to select, shift select, so drag select, sorry, those points there on this side and just move them across holding down the control key to the right. Not a great deal. And I'll do the same with the right hand side ones and just move them across. Um, move more to the middle. Obviously we haven't got a good enough shape there to blend between the two. Um, but you'll notice that that object there, and if I select that object there, have the same amount of nodes, which is basically what is the best way to use when we're using... Um, the bend tool. Um, I'll just reduce that down in size and reduce that down that way in size. No, we'll, so now a matter of just running through and slowly selecting individual sh shapes, moving them nodes and moving them in uh, a bit at a time. Um, move them in. Don't worry too much about it at the moment. Just getting some idea. Um, just. Pull that one out like that one, pull that one out like that one. Uh, these are a bit too sharp, so we'll reduce those down. Hope you can see that at this very small size there. Um, Alright, so you've now reduced that down considerably in, in, in size, but you've still kept the same number of nodes. Um, obviously, you don't want a big fat um, thing like that, so. If you drag this one across here like this, you're starting to get some idea of a shape that could possibly blend from one to the other. Now I've rounded that top, it gets very difficult to. I'm going to zoom in for a second. Having rounded that top, it gets a bit difficult when I narrow it down to keep the shapes similar. Right, zoom back out again, the original zoom. Okay, so I'll select both of them now. I don't want a line colour, so I'll uh, remove the line colour. No. Uh, I'll select the bottom shape, select the um, blend tool, and just drag a blend across. Actually, that blends quite good, um, I, which I don't want it to be, so we'll try again. Um, I'll blend it across. No, it's blending too well to show you what's actually. Uh, so often you can, you can get some very strange blends, but you'll notice in a blend that you you can blend between two nodes like this, two nodes like this. Whereas if you blend between that node and that node, you can get very odd shapes. Um, so I'll just click undo to undo that. But just to show you again, if you click there to that node to that node. Or that node, 
for that mode and give you a very odd shape. And people often say, well, you know, what's the point of the blend tool when it gives you a very odd shape like that? So uh, just try and click two nodes similar together uh, and click the one to one ratio. And you've now got quite a good blend there. Um, you can increase that by 50 steps, say. I don't know how well this should show up on this uh, display, but you can see that that's quite a good blend altogether there. Um, say I wanted to um, just adjust this bit around the top here. Um, I can select the blend, so it says one blend. If I then control and click just in the, in the lighter white space, it goes to one shape in the lighter white space. I can then click on this shape editor tool and it highlights the nodes. And when I move the nodes around, you'll notice that Zara quite happily um, on screen adjusts the whole thing. Just to show you, you know, in extreme circumstances, if I pull this one back out to here again, you see what Zara quite happily changes it, even at 50 steps, quite rapidly on how you're doing. I can change that one, bring that one in there if I want. So it will quite happily give me a, a better way, uh, a better um, way of actually editing the blend as I go along. I can change the colour as well and make that one a lighter one. I can change that to a blue if you want. But um, we could change that, keep that to, at that light colour. And there you are, you know, that's the way I uh, managed to do uh, a vase with a blend. Uh, again, these, no, these colours here are named colours, so if you actually go into the um, colour gallery, which is uh, open, sorry, way off screen there, there. there's the colour gallery and the, the base colour is called base one. I can edit that, sorry, and there it is there. And I can change that to green or deep blue. And you'll notice that changes both the, the darker colour or the, the mid shade colour and the, uh, and the lower shade colour as we go along. Uh, I hope this has helped you. Cheers. Bye.